Hello dear friends, welcome back in this video lecture. Dear friends, today we are going to learn a new thing and a new spectroscopy technique and the title is Resonant Ionization Spectroscopy. So this Resonant Ionization Spectroscopy can be termed or can be treated as RIS or RIS. Okay, so resonance R stands for resonance, I stands for ionization and S stands for spectroscopy. It is very similar to that of atomic fluorescence spectroscopy. That's why it is studied under the heading of atomic fluorescence spectroscopy. Okay, so why it is necessary to study the RIS because this RIS technique this RIS spectroscopy is very superior than AAS that is atomic absorption spectroscopy, atomic fluorescence spectroscopy as well as atomic emission spectroscopy. Okay. So this is a new technique which is derived from the atomic fluorescence spectroscopy but some differences are there from atomic fluorescence in this resonant ionization spectroscopy. Okay. So, first of all, let us see what is the principle of this resonant emission spectroscopy. Okay. So, principle is very simple. It is just like that of the uh, atomic fluorescence spectroscopy, but somewhat difference, a minor difference is there and that minor difference gives us a very better analysis of most of the elements present in the different analysis sample. Okay. And that's why this except helium and neon these are the two inert gases except these two elements most of the metals as well as some different elements okay can be detected can be analyzed can be assessed with the help of this resonant ionization spectroscopy the condition is that the condition of this using or use of this ris technique is that the laser must be of must be available to that of the uh, having same frequency identical frequency to that of the analyte sample the atoms of the analyte sample then and then we can analyze or we can assess the uh, analyte sample of corresponding having corresponding or specific atoms so what is the principle here let us see so with the help of pulse laser we are using laser as a source of electromagnetic radiation for the excitation of atoms just like in atomic fluorescence spectroscopy okay so with the help of pulsed laser as a source of electromagnetic radiation our sample is present analyzed sample is present and in that analyzed sample the atoms of that analyzed samples are present that pulsed laser is used to excite the atoms of to excite the atoms of analyzed sample from the ground state to the higher electronic level okay this is the very basic concept that is uh, the principle of every spectroscopy technique that all the chemical species either atoms molecules or ions they are at the ground state level before excitation okay before irradiation of the uh, electromagnetic radiation okay by this uh, electromagnetic radiation before focusing before applying this electromagnetic radiation all these chemical species were present at the ground state and when these atoms are present in ground state they are excited to the higher electronic level higher electronic level by the absorption of pulsed laser okay so when excitation takes place these atoms goes to the higher electronic level okay and sufficient amount of energy is get absorbed from that laser pulsed laser and due to this energy these atoms are get converted to positively charged ions and electrons the positively charged ions we may call them as a cations okay so the atoms are get converted to atom uh, ions and electrons so this process is known as ionization this process is known as ionization and hence the name ionization spectroscopy is now we will see <laughs> what is in by resonant okay so this is the very basic principle for this uh, atom uh, resonant emission spectroscope ionization spectroscopy now let us see the operation or theory or how that working of that atomic 
सॉरी रेजोनेंट आयनाइजेशन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी हैज बीन टेक्स प्लेस सो दिस अ वेरी सिलेक्टिव टेक्निक ओके वेरी सिलेक्टिव टेक्निक एंड इन दिस केस द स्पेसिफिक स्पेशलिटी ऑफ दिस टेक्निक इज ओनली दोज आइटम्स एप्सॉल्व इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशंस दैट इज लेजर रेडिएशंस वी आर यूजिंग लेजर इयर सो इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन मीन्स लेजर रेडिएशंस ओनली दोज आइटम्स आर एब्सॉर्बिंग दैट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन और दैट लेजर रेडिएशन विच आर हैविंग सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी विच आर हैविंग सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी टू दैट ऑफ द लेजर ओके लेटस से द लेजर हैविंग फ्रीक्वेंसी फोर हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर लेटस से फॉर एग्जाम्पल और इट इज मे हैविंग नाइन फिफ्टी सेंटीमीटर इनवर्स एनी एनीथिंग सेंटीमीटर इनवर्स इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वेव नंबर और इफ इट इज हैविंग लेजर फ्रीक्वेंसी इज इन द एट हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर ओके सो ओनली दोज आइटम्स विच आर हैविंग द फ्रीक्वेंसी देर फ्रीक्वेंसी विच इज मैचिंग टू दैट ऑफ द लेजर फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड दिस इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ रेजोनेंस This is the concept of resonance. Okay, so why we call it as a resonance ionizing spectroscopy, just like our NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. Okay, so there is also resonance takes place between the uh, uh, precessional frequency of that nuclei and that of the uh, applied magnetic field. Okay, in in the same case here, here the resonance takes place with that of the frequency of laser. that we are applying as a source of electromagnetic radiation to excite the atoms okay and to that of the frequency of the atoms so this frequency get matches perfectly and this condition is known as resonance and hence the name resonant ionization spectroscopy okay uh, as well as uh, this technique is sensitive as well as it is more sensitive also okay so <coughs> why it is called as a more sensitive because whatever the atoms are converted to ions whatever the atoms they are takes uh, they are converted to ions means ionization takes place all that ions and electrons all that ions and electrons are analyzed or they are get uh, or they are get assessed by the resonant ionization spectroscopy okay and all the analyte atoms which are present in the beam which are absorbing that beam of laser okay they are all excited and they are get ionized further okay this is the speciality of this ris and hence it is more sensitive then except the helium and neon i already told you that except helium and neon these two uh, inert gases all the elements can be assessed with the help of this ris technique okay then next one is most important how the working or how the different types of energetic transitions energetic mechanisms can be taken place in this ris okay so let us look at this figure or diagram uh in which the bottom line is showing the ground state of the atoms of the analyte sample this is the ground state of the analyte sample okay and here as energy is increasing from bottom to top these are different electronic energy levels these are different electronic energy levels of the atoms of the analyte sample okay so the <coughs> dashed lines are shown here these these dashed lines are shown here to indicate the ionization energy to indicate the ionization energy which is required to ionize the atoms into the ions okay required the ionization energy is required or this is the minimum amount of energy required to convert the atoms into ions and electrons okay so here in each uh, below the each dashed line we have written a here we have written a here okay so what is the meaning of a so below that energy below that this is dash line below that da dash line the spaces are in the form of atoms analyte sample is in the form of atoms and when our atoms crosses this minimum amount of energy 
then that atoms get converted to ions so i stands for ions a stands for atoms okay so below this is the cross line beyond this the chemical species is in the form of ions and below this our sample is in the form of atoms so that's why this is the ionization energy of the atoms okay so different five fates have been described here we will see one by one in scheme first let us see in scheme first the laser having particular frequency is used let us see the it is having frequency nu1 okay and the ground state atoms the ground state atoms are used to excite to excite into the higher electronic level here okay and a second laser this is nu1 this is nu2 a second laser is used to ionize to ionize the uh, the excited atoms into ions and electrons okay so this is the uh, case of scheme first now in scheme second what is the case here new one is there new one is there means what the same laser has been used here same laser has been used but the frequency of the first uh, frequency of the first laser frequency of the uh, laser is get doubled optically doubled here okay and hence with the help of this laser frequency the ground state atoms are convert are promoted or they are excited to the higher electronic level and then they are ionized further to the ions then in the case sec third or in third scheme so what is the case here two different frequency or two different lasers have been used okay with the help of first laser the ground state atoms are converted or they are promoted they are get excited to the higher electronic level and then they are uh, further they are further uh, promoted to next higher electronic level atoms are converted to or atoms are get excited to higher uh, more higher electronic energy level and from this with the help of either nu1 or nu2 that is first laser or second laser you can choose okay or with the help of any laser there is ionization of atoms takes place okay so that's why we have written here nu1 or nu2 ionization can be taken place by either of the two lasers then the fourth case is given here and the fourth case is just like uh, here double the frequency they have used the two lasers and the first laser is with doubled frequency so two new one is written here and with the help of this first laser with doubled frequency the ground state atoms are converted to excited state atoms and then from this excited state atoms they are further excited to more higher electronic energy level and from either of first laser or second laser that is from new one or new two the atoms are get converted to ions and electrons that is ionization takes place here okay so this dashed line is representing the ionization process and in the last process <coughs> that is scheme five so what is the year with the help of first laser uh, here the case is different here what is this simultaneously two photons are absorbed from the laser simultaneously two photons are absorbed from the lasers okay and with the help of first laser the atoms are uh, the atoms are ground state atoms are converted to excited state and from the first excited state they are ionized further to ions and electrons either with absorption of new one or new two frequency okay so this is these are the different possible electric uh, energy transitions uh, that has been possible in the resonant ionization spectroscopy now what types of detectors which types of detectors can be used uh, in this risk that is resonant ionization spectroscopy okay so here the first one is pulsed ion chamber pulsed ion chamber can be used second one is a proportional counter and third one is geiger muller counter or gm counter we know that this proportional counter and gm counter have also been used in the 
nuclear radiation uh, counter okay so to count the nuclear radiations these two detectors have been used okay the same detectors can be used in the uh, resonant ionization spectroscopy okay you may ask uh, in your examination like what will be the or what are the uh, detectors that has, that can be used in resonant ionization spectroscopy okay so these three are used that is pulsed ion chamber a proportional counter or a gm counter okay then you may ask uh, so what is the difference or speciality of this ris from the afs that is atomic fluorescence spectroscopy okay so such small things you have to uh, keep in mind that while answering such questions okay and uh, here the Adv some advantages and disadvantages are there so what are the advantages of this afa a uh, ris technique so it is very sensitive and even very trace ultra trace analysis can be taken place or can be done with the help of this ris technique means even the concentration of analyte sample is very very less we can detect that sample with the help of this resonance ionization spectroscopy the only condition is that you must have the laser which have the frequency exactly equal to that of the atoms of that analyte sample okay uh, one disadvantage is also there for this ris technique and it is nothing but the sample must be in the gas phase the sample must be in the gas phase this is only the disadvantage of this ris technique and hence uh, to overcome this disadvantage we have to convert the our analyte sample into gaseous gaseous condition or gaseous state okay so this is all about the resonance ionization spectroscopy uh, i think you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching this video have a nice day